Hi everyone, this is Frank Westfall, and in this video, I will show you how to do a basic tune-up on your computer. This will reduce security risks, improve overall speed and performance, and free up disk space. It will also give you some peace of mind knowing your computer is relatively secure and working properly. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I was an IT engineer for eight years, and I'm creating a huge library of computer tutorial videos over time on this channel. And I want to say thank you to all of you who have recently subscribed. It is because of you that I'm continuing to create these videos. Thank you. Here are the steps we're going to cover in this video. One, install free anti-malware software and clean any and all malware off of the computer if it has any malware on it. Two, update the system firmware, also commonly called the system BIOS. Three, turn off applications that are running at startup that don't need to be running in the background. Four, Review all software installed on the computer and uninstall any old or no longer relevant software. Five, optimize the visual performance settings, which will free up processor cycles for other purposes. Six, clean up junk data on the disk and then check it for errors and fix any that exist. Seven, and last, but absolutely not least, we are simply going to restart this computer. All right, here we go. I'm gonna show you how to do this on Windows 10 but it's essentially the same process for Windows 7 and Windows 11. So first we're gonna install free anti-malware software and clean any and all malware off this computer. I have tried many different types of anti-malware software in personal and professional environments, and I have never seen an issue occur due to malware on a computer that has been cleaned or is being protected by Malwarebytes Anti-Malware. It is the most effective anti-malware software I have ever seen. When it comes to recommendations of anti-malware, I just say Malwarebytes is the best in my opinion. And if you use it, you're not gonna have issues with malware. So we're gonna go download a free copy of Malwarebytes. Malwarebytes.com is the website. All right, so here we are at the Malwarebytes website. We're gonna do a free download. So we're gonna run this, say yes, and install. This is for me or my family. All right, now the installation is complete. We click getting started. Uh, we can skip this for now. We are actually gonna do a scan we don't want premium we can just go open we don't have to enter our email we're gonna run a scan okay so we actually found one piece of malware on this computer and anytime you find malware doing a scan you want to quarantine it and if it asks you to restart then restart the computer as well uh, in this case, it didn't ask for a restart, so we don't need to restart. Now we've installed anti-malware and scanned, and now this computer does not have any malware on it. We can close this and close this. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna update the system firmware on this computer, which is also called the system BIOS. So to do that, just open a web browser, type in the make and model of your computer and the model number. So Dell, this one's a Latitude, and it's an E6430, and then the word drivers. Now, this is very similar for any manufacturer, but the key here is you want to go to the manufacturer website. I'm not going to get drivers from drivers.com or driverdownload.com. I'm going to get them from Dell. If you have an HP computer, get your drivers from HP. If you have an Acer computer, get your drivers from Acer. Get them from the manufacturer of the computer and be sure you do that. Here, support for Latitude E6430 drivers and downloads. You'll find something similar for this for your manufacturer. Like if I were to type in, you know, HP laptop drivers, you wanna put the actual model number in there. But if I did that, for example, I can show you. So software and driver support for HP. Now you can see here, this is hp.com. That's legitimate. Now, if we went somewhere down here, like driver easy, HP laptop and drivers, this is, this is malware. You're most likely gonna download malware here. 
you want to go directly to the manufacturer website and you can check that by looking at the domain you're going to hp.com is actually Hewlett Packard Dell.com is actually Dell so I'm gonna to go to Dell.com and I'm gonna find drivers the process is very similar for whatever manufacturer you're going to and in this case we're only doing system firmware we're not looking for other system updates we just want the firmware System firmware is very fundamental to the proper functionality of the computer. And that's why we're only doing system firmware. It's the most important one. All right, there's that. So we're going to run this. And we're going to say yes. This is going to require a restart. We're going to say OK. Now, I already actually have the latest BIOS installed on this. But it's very likely that you won't have the latest BIOS installed. So the installers will usually show you either what you have installed and what you're going to, or they'll just say you're about to install this new firmware. And you always want the latest system BIOS. So I'm gonna say yes to this. All right, the computer has restarted, and so far we've completed steps one and two. Now step three is turn off applications that are running at startup that don't need to be running in the background. A lot of software, when you install it, will just run whenever the computer starts up and it's sitting there running even if you're not using it. Obviously, that's consuming system resources and it's slowing down the efficiency and speed of your computer. So I'm gonna show you how to find software that's running and then you can determine if you want it running at startup or if you wanna just run it manually whenever you use it. You can just go down to the search bar and startup apps. This shows all the things that are running automatically when this computer starts up. I'm not using Microsoft OneDrive if you're using OneDrive, then you want to leave this running, but I'm not using it. So it's sitting there running and I don't want it. So I'm going to turn it off. And then McAfee Security Scanner Schedule. This is actually another type of anti-malware. And a lot of companies ship with this kind of McAfee software installed automatically on the computer. I have never liked McAfee. I've seen lots of computers totally infected with malware and McAfee sitting there running in the background saying, hey, everything's okay. And, you know, I come in as an engineer and I go, everything is not okay you missed a ton of malware <laughs> so i'm not a fan of mcafee and i definitely don't want this running and we're actually going to completely uninstall this in a second but for now we're just going to turn it off i look at each one of these and determine what it is elps pointing device driver so this is actually it shows a little trackpad this is the trackpad for the laptop that allows it to move around so we want that running bluetooth i actually connect bluetooth devices to this computer pretty regularly so yes i want bluetooth Cortana, I already turned that off. That's speech recognition. Uh, some people like it, and it's kind of like Alexa for Windows PCs. I, I personally don't use it, so I turned it off. Google Drive, I actually use that. So I'm going to turn that, I'm going to leave that on. McAfee, we just turned off. Microsoft OneDrive, we just turned off. I'm not using Skype currently. I used it a lot in IT, but I don't use it now very often, so I don't need that. Spotify, I don't want that running in the background. If I choose to listen to Spotify, I'll just listen to it. I don't want it just starting up with the computer whenever I start the computer. Security notification icon, I actually like that. That's directly from Microsoft. Just lets me know if there's something that is an issue with the computer that I need to pay attention to. And this HPWSCHD application, this is related to an HP printer. This is actually an old printer that I'm no longer using. And we're gonna uninstall that software shortly, but if it's your current printer, I recommend leaving it on. And when you're going through this list, if you don't recognize something, like if you don't know what it is, just Google search it. So for example, say I didn't know what this is. Just open Google and type in Alps pointing device driver. And you're gonna find out exactly what it is. All right, so we've turned off startup apps. Now, also down here, we can look for other applications that are running at startup. For example, Malwarebytes didn't show up in this list, but it is running at startup. And we don't run it to run at startup. It's not gonna be doing anything anyway, so we're gonna turn it off, start with Windows. Just turn that off, and then we can actually quit it right now. And then the same thing with OneDrive. It's not gonna run at startup anymore, but we wanna actually close it right now too. So we're gonna close that. That is step three. Now, step four. We're gonna review all the software that's installed on this computer, period. 
and we're going to uninstall any old or no longer relevant software. So to do that, open control panel, go to programs and features, and this is the list of all the software that's installed on this computer. Now, I recognize all of this stuff because I installed it and I'm an IT engineer, but it's very likely that you're not going to recognize a lot of this software. Sometimes they give it the name of the actual software itself, like for example, Adobe Acrobat. Well, we know that's an Adobe product. We know it's legitimate and we're probably going to keep it, but it might have a weird name on it. And if it has a weird name on it, again, Google search it, find out exactly what it is. So for example, let's, let's just say, I don't know what Belark advisor is. Well, what is that? Why is this on this computer? If, if I remove it, is it going to break my computer? Well, let's find out. What is it? Okay. So Blark advisor actually has a response to that. And Wikipedia is a good place to find this stuff too. Blark advisor is a free download license for personal use. The Blark advisor builds a detailed profile of installed software and hardware, missing security patches, antivirus status, blah, 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 blah. So it's legitimate software, but I don't actually use it anymore. So I'm going to uninstall it. You know, I've seen a lot of software in here like coupons.com or shop.com or, you know, driverdownload.com or driver easy or something like that. If you see those kind of names in here, that's usually malware. The touchpad, yes, we use that. Adobe Acrobat, that's for reading PDFs. That's legitimate software from Adobe. It's not going to do any harm to the computer and it's actually very useful. But I open PDFs in Google Chrome. Adobe Acrobat isn't necessary anymore to read PDFs. Google Chrome does it and it does it way faster. So I'm actually going to uninstall this because it's just not needed. Flashback Express, yes. This is what I'm using to record the screen. Google Chrome, Google Drive, yes, yes, yes. Okay, this is an old printer. I don't have that printer anymore. I don't need this software, all of it gets uninstalled. And as you can see, it removes some icons over here. We don't, we don't need that. And I don't actually want that dialog box either. Get rid of that. HP update, we don't need that. This is all related to that one printer uninstall malware bytes we want that we just installed it here we got some mcafee stuff we don't want that you don't need two different brands of anti-malware on your computer continuing on microsoft edge that's legitimate onedrive uh it's legitimate i'm actually not going to uninstall it because i may use it in the future I usually leave all the Microsoft software on the computer. It's a Microsoft operating system. These are all graphics drivers and they are required to use the graphics card in this computer. So I'm going to leave those. Now product improvement study for HP OfficeJet. Again, more software related to that one single printer. Let's get rid of it. And VideoPad Video Editor, I actually use that. Uh, these Vulkan runtime libraries, those are actually legitimate. And the Bluetooth software, that's legitimate. And I want it. Windows PC Health Check, that's legitimate. And I want it. So we know what all the software is now. And again, it could take some time to go through a big long list of software. But, you know, you might have 100 pieces of software on here. And when you're done, you might have uninstalled 30 or 40 of them. So this really adds up when you put it all together. All these steps seem like little steps. But this is a tune-up. This is what we're doing. A bunch of little things that add up to a big effect on the computer. So we're done with step four. Step five, we're going to optimize the visual performance settings, which will free up processor cycles for other purposes. You can go to control panel again and system. And then we want to scroll down and get some advanced system settings. Right here and performance so by default they have basically lower performance and better visual settings and if you go adjust for performance and then just only select the things that are important to you like for example i like to see thumbnails instead of icons for pictures so i'm going to check that one i like to see drop shadows on the desktop so i'm going to check that one but all these other ones are not important to me 
and they're all just visual elements that don't affect the functionality of the computer. They're just using system resources to make it look slightly better. And honestly, you, you tell me if you can tell the difference when I hit apply. It's gonna look basically exactly the same, except now it performs a little bit better. That's it for step five, that's a really easy one. Now step six, we're gonna clean up junk data on the disk and then check it for errors and fix any that exist. Now, if you have a disk that is showing red here, if this is showing red, that means that your disk is so full that it's almost gonna stop the computer from working. And if you continue to add data to it, it will stop the computer from working. The disk needs at least a gigabyte or a couple hundred megabytes to be able to function at all. And if this disk gets completely full, the computer will stop working. So you never wanna let your disk get completely full. There's obviously a lot of space on this. We're not running out of storage, but I'm gonna first go through the normal cleanup tool to use. And then I'm also gonna show you another tool where if your disk is completely full and you don't know what's on there, but you need to get rid of some of that data, I'm gonna show you a tool that will really easily allow you to figure out where your largest files are. And then you can look at them and see what they are and then get rid of them if you need to. So first we're just gonna do a regular disk cleanup. And to do that, you just right click your C drive or your local disk and then go to properties and then go to disk cleanup. And here it's gonna show you all of the data that's extra sitting on this disk. This is basically junk data. I have never had a system issue because I deleted this stuff. The only thing you might wanna not delete is what's in your recycle bin because you may have put stuff in there that you wanna restore later. I know for a fact that there isn't anything in my recycle bin that I wanna keep, so I'm actually gonna delete it. But just be careful about your recycle bin. And then the other thing you wanna do is do clean up system files. This includes in the disk cleanup Windows update files that are now junk. They were used temporarily and they're no longer necessary. They're used for the installation of Windows updates and they're sitting here now taking up space on this disk. So I'm gonna go to clean up system files as well. So Windows update cleanup and then just check all these other ones. And again, maybe not recycle bin, but in this case, I'm gonna do recycle bin. Now take a look at this. We're cleaning up 5.6 gigabytes of disk space. That's not a small amount of data. Delete these, yes. That disk cleanup has completed. When it finishes deleting, the window just goes away. The window went away and the disk has been cleaned up. The next part of step six is to check the disk for errors and fix any that might exist. And to do that, we need to open a command prompt. So type in CMD in your search bar, right click the app and do run as administrator. Then type in this command, chkdsk space forward slash f. Hit enter. Check disk cannot run because the volume is in use by another process. Would you like to schedule this to be checked the next time the system restarts? And the answer to that is yes. The next time the system restarts, the volume will be checked. We're not going to restart quite yet. Now, this tool is called windirstat. WinDIRstat.net is the official website for it. This is showing mirrors. These are download locations that are on different sets of servers in most likely different parts of the world. And you can download it from any one of these. So I've just chosen the first one. We don't need to donate. I mean, it's a nice thing if you do because this is free software and it's, it's good quality software, it's powerful. But in this case, I'm not gonna donate. WinDIRstat, Windows installer, this is what we want. We're gonna download that. Okay, there it is. Now we wanna run this and say yes and accept the terms. Yes, next. Just the defaults are fine. Next, next, and next. And now finish with yes, run WinDIR stat. Right here in this window, it's saying which drive do you wanna analyze? This application doesn't actually do anything. It just shows you what's on your drive. And then from there, you can take action, but the application itself isn't gonna modify anything. It's just gonna show you what's there. The only drive on this computer is C drive. So yeah, we wanna analyze that. You're gonna let that analyze for a second. And it can take a while to analyze the drive. So it finished. And this is what it shows, which is what's really cool about this. 
each one of these different colors and each one of these little blocks is an actual file on this computer. So if your disk is getting full and you're saying, I don't know what's filling it up. Well, I can tell you this is a good place to start because it's the biggest file on the entire computer. So let's find out what this is. Uh, when we click it, it shows us where it's located and what it is. And it turns out this is a Windows 11 ISO file and it is 5.1 gigabytes. Now, I don't need this anymore. So if my disk was getting full and I looked at this file, I would say, hey, I don't need that. What is that doing here? I'm going to delete it. And you can actually delete it directly from here and you can delete it to the recycle bin or just completely gone forever. And I'm just going to delete it forever right now. It's warning us that we can't get this back. If you see a huge block of one color like this and then you look at the files and you find out, oh, those are all movies. I forgot I even had those. If you don't need them anymore, get rid of them. Free up that space on your disk. And that completes step six. Now, step seven is the easiest step of all, but it is important. We're just restarting this computer every once in a while. Because we've already done multiple restarts, I'm not gonna do another one. Before ending, there are two quick, but very important things I want to point out. One, a basic tune-up like this is something you should do regularly. Maybe you do it every three months or every six months or even once a month. If you do this regularly, you will have many fewer computer issues than if you don't do it regularly. As you can see, it doesn't take long. When you need your computer, it's going to work properly for you. I look at it like an oil change in a car. If you never change your car's oil, would you expect it to constantly get you from point A to point B without eventually failing? Probably not. Cars need to be maintained. Computers also need to be maintained for them to consistently be reliable and efficient. And two, the last step you probably noticed was a simple restart. I cannot emphasize enough how many times I got calls for computer issues as an IT engineer and when I got there I discovered that the issues were simply because the computer had not been restarted for months on end. It's okay to leave desktop computers running but they still need to be restarted every week or so. Oftentimes there are pending updates which have been installed but not applied to the running system so those updates are sitting in some sort of limbo mode and the computer functionality can be affected by that. Also, web browsers need to be restarted regularly and web browser tabs consume lots of RAM. So close those web browser tabs you're not using anymore. All your network connections are refreshed and reestablished when you restart. This ensures that your sessions are valid and haven't timed out. There are many things that are happening behind the scenes when you do a simple restart. So always restart your computer at least once a week. All right, thank you for watching. Please put any questions you have in the comment section. I do read them and I do answer them. And please subscribe. Bye for now.